Hey guys, so for those of you who have been waiting for this build of the XPL117 from Tomoquad, so here it is, and I'm just going to show it to you all fully built right now, and I will roll the build uh, video in a minute. So before that, I just wanted to let you know what kind of parts I'm using in here. I'm using uh, these Racer Star 1103 motors. Uh, they're supposedly rated for 1S only, but I just hovered this on 2S and the motors weren't even warm, so definitely 2S should be fine. Using some 6 amp uh, BL Hilly S uh, Racer Star ESCs, uh, and I'm using an iRange X801 uh, Free Sky Compatible Receiver. This receiver is eh, it's okay. Uh, I wouldn't go too far with this one, uh, just to be safe. Um, and of course, inside there, which you can't see, is the uh, Furious FPV uh, Pico. BLX, it's a flight controller and PDB all in one, which makes this build extremely light. Um, I think it comes in at about 55 grams for this whole thing right here that you're looking at right now. And I'm using the tiny QX90 spare part all in one FPV camera, it's like 25 bucks. As always, I'll put links to all these parts in the description, as always. And I'll go ahead and I'll roll the build video now. Hey guys, I've already started on the build of the Tomo Quads uh, XBL117 and um, I've got the Pico uh, BLX flight controller mounted here and you want to use the included standoffs there's four of them and I've elected to put the nuts on the bottom and the screws on top and before you mount this you want to solder on your JST connector I have it coming in from underneath and it's connected to the negative and the positive there and then at that point uh, once the flight controller is mounted uh, you go ahead and solder all your pads for your ESC and signal wires so there's four of those and uh, I also have here on the bottom these three are for the receiver I have my S bus uh, pads here uh, bridged and uh, these uh, five volts uh, right here um, will be for the for the uh, FX798T uh, camera. So at this point I'm going to go ahead and I'll um, mount my ESCs and solder up the wires to these pads and I'll be right back with that. Okay guys, I've got all my ESCs mounted and uh, just I'm just using some double-sided foam tape to hold the ESCs onto the arm. Uh, the important thing is you want to route your wires, your positive and negative and your signal under the board around the standoff and then back over to where you need to put the uh, solder on your, your ESC wires. So you got your positive, oh, I'm sorry, your negative, your signal, and your positive. And the other thing you need to keep in mind is that you leave enough space here so that uh, the side plate here can slide in okay. So let me show you that here. So you just gotta make sure that, that you don't uh, pinch this off here so that uh, this side plate can stick in. Uh, other than that, just route your wires underneath. As you can see, around underneath there, and then back up and over. And uh, to the top. So this is probably the uh, hardest and uh, most time consuming part of the whole build. Uh, just mounting your flight controller and uh, getting your ESC soldered on. Uh, the rest of this build should go pretty quick. I'm just going to uh, solder around my receiver pigtail, my pigtail for the uh, uh, all-in-one FPV camera, and then um, uh, mount the motors, and then we uh, got to mount the FPV camera in here. So there's a few different mounting options. Uh, we sent two different 3D printed uh, pieces here. A little piece here for the uh, camera here, and this is probably for a different type of camera, maybe with a uh, rubber band strap or something holding like that. I'm not sure which one I'm going to use, because I think that if I want to use this one, I have to decase the camera, and I'm I'm, I'm going to not do that. So I'm probably going to use this one here. And uh, there's there's some holes here on the side where uh, these holes here, where these holes here correspond to and it's going to be right here so it's going to so you have an uh, basically some angle options here so you have a basically flat a little bit of an angle and uh, maybe about a 25 to 30 degree angle here for maximum 
So I'll, uh, when it gets to that point, I'll, you know, I'll show you that. Okay guys, so I'm gonna uh, mount the camera here in a little bit and uh, put on the side plates. Um, I'm gonna go with this flat camera mounting option because I'm not gonna use the FX uh, 797 or 798T camera. I'm gonna use, this as the uh, tiny QX90 spare part. All-in-one camera is very similar to the uh, FX here. And um, I just have it stuck on with some double-sided foam tape on the flat surface here. And I uh, have a rubber band going around and underneath here to the other side. And that seems to be holding it. Now, um, for whatever reason, I didn't get any self-tapping screws in this kit. I think that this probably should come with some self-tapping screws because I don't know how anyone would be able to mount these. I found some screws here from uh, a toy quad I, I kind of not using and uh, I'm not exactly sure if this is the right size because uh, it'll go through the hole. Let's see if I can get that in there. It goes through the side plate no problem but it's a little loose and then uh, I think it's too small because it doesn't fit. Whoops. Doesn't exactly fit uh, this hole here. It just goes in and uh, yeah, obviously it's too small. It needs, to, it needs to be a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna have to improvise and maybe I'll put some Gorilla Glue in the hole to uh, secure this. And now it won't, won't come out. Uh, anyway, yeah, so the hole is too big for that screw. I'm going to either try and find another screw or improvise and find some other way to mount this. Basically, it's going to go in between the two side plates like that, and I'm going to actually tilt it back with a little bit of an angle. And there are these uh, little standoffs here. They're, they're going to be between the two side plates. There's going to be three of them. And then there's a little uh, back plate here in the, in the back side. I'll, I'll put that on. I'll show you that when I'm done with that. Um, yeah, let me let me go ahead and uh, mount all this stuff, and then I'll go ahead and show you what what, what I did. Okay, guys, I got the side plates on and the camera mounted, along with the receiver and this back plate here. A couple things that I should uh, note here for you guys when you're building this is. Uh, I'd recommend sticking with the FX797 camera, uh, which is this one. And uh, I'm not using this one because it's not working. So I'm, that's why I'm using the uh, tiny QX90 camera and this flat mount. Um, however, uh, if you do do that, you got to make sure that you uh, mount this camera all the way forward, even in front of the, the slot here, because um, I put it in the middle of the plate and now that the camera is angled, I use, I'm using an angle here, the, this top standoff can't can't go in. Um, it's just there for, for, for strength and stability so things are a little bit loose uh, but it's not that bad. I do have the front standoff in here to hold those in. Basically you need these standoffs here to, to squeeze in the side plates on these notches in the main plate so that it doesn't move. Um, so that's just uh, something I wasn't aware of. Um, I'm letting you guys know that if you are using a, like the QX90 camera or a different camera that's bigger, make sure you move it all the way forward if you're going to be using some sort of an angle. If you're using a flat, it uh, shouldn't be a problem. It, sh it should stay out of the way of this top standoff. So I'm not able to use that. And additionally, I am not able to use the rear standoff here in the back. And so things are... Uh, as you can see here, I can I can move these plates, which is not ideal, but probably not going to be a disaster. Uh, the reason I can't use the rear standoffs is I elected to run my wires, as I mentioned earlier in this video, underneath the uh, flight controller, and then uh, up and over to the uh, ESC pads over here in the back of the flight controller. And uh, doing that gets in the way of this, this rear standoff. So 
uh, for the rear part of this, um, at least for this design, I would say run the wires up and over to the top part of the flight controller and uh, to, from the front to the back for these wires instead of underneath and then back over. I kind of did that because I wanted a sort of a cleaner build uh, for, for on top but uh, and also not have the wires come in through this way. And that's the reason I did that but if you do that then this uh, you can't use this rear standoff it gets in the way of these uh, these ESC wires get in the way of that standoff so um, other than that uh, let's see here what else did I run into oh yeah um, so as I mentioned before I, I didn't get the self-tapping screws I've been told uh, by Tomo that uh, he uh, is <laughs> he was supposed to include the self-tapping screws but for whatever reason he forgot to include it in my kit uh, so I ended up using, uh, trying using a, um, I don't know what kind of screw it was, I just, one of my parts, spare, spare parts box, and it was, it was, um, snug to, to get into this hole here, and, uh, while, uh, I was screwing it into the 3D printed plastic part, the head stripped off, and so, and I wasn't able to get that out, and so what Tomo told me to do is, uh, uh, use a drill bit to, uh, open up these holes a little bit more which I did and I'm using an M2 uh, hex screw here so I use one here and I'm using um, two over here so um, obviously you guys shouldn't have that problem you should include those uh, self-tapping screws for you so this is probably not relevant for you you guys I'm just letting you know why you're seeing this because it's you're probably like well what's going on there um, let's see what else oh so he mentioned that uh, if you um, are using the FX camera here, and uh, if you take the, if you decase it, you can use the three 3D printed part and the self-tapping screws on the side. However, uh, if you want to just leave the case on, um, it'll it'll fit in here. Let's see here. Let's see if I get that to show on the camera. It'll fit in there, and then. He's saying use this uh, top hole here with the self-tapping screws into the side of the uh, plastic case and then uh, that'll let you uh, hold the camera in and since there's, if you put it right in the center you'll be able to adjust your tilt angle that way. So that's another, another way you can uh, uh, um, get some angle on the camera or mount the camera. Um, I just... Um, Zip tied my receiver to the uh, back of this back plate here, which just notches in over here, and they fit in just fine. Um, they were it's actually a pretty good fit. And then I'm just running my wires up, up through the uh, video transmitter antenna, so that just kind of goes back for now. So uh, that's pretty much it. I'm going to go ahead and mount the motors now, and uh, run the wires backwards, and then probably electrical tape this or heat shrink it, I'm not sure. I'll, I'll, I'll do that and then uh, I'll, I'll show you the end result here. Okay guys, so I'm all done putting this thing together. Um, see where I left off was I had put the, needed to put the motors on and they were just uh, screwed on with the four screws that were provided and I just used the uh, ESC wires and I wrapped them around, uh, looped them around backwards to the ESC pads here, like I normally do for all my builds. And um, I'm just using some heat shrink to secure everything together here. And the heat shrink goes all the way around. I um, wrapped this uh, Velcro strap through the frame here uh, around the outside. I probably should have uh, put that in there before I mounted the flight controller in that slot beforehand, um, but I forgot to do that. And by the way, this uh, kit does not come with this Velcro strap. I picked this up at the uh, the dollar store. It's like you get ten straps for a buck or something like that. So um, pick up these little thin Velcro straps from your dollar store if you want to get those. I have a little uh, dual lock here on top of some. I have some foam here and some double sided foam tape to, to protect the battery because these uh, nuts here are gonna put holes in the battery so I put some foam tape there and some a little bit of foam padding Let's see here what else um oh so I'm not using the props that were in the picture 
for the product page on Tomo's website. These are the Rotorx uh, RX 2535 propellers. Normally they come in a four blade configuration. I'm just going to use a, a two blade configuration here. Obviously there's no screws here to hold them in. It's just a friction fit to this um, motor stem, uh, the motor shaft, and it's a 1.4 millimeter shaft. It's designed to use these Gemfan 65 millimeter propellers and these are actually uh, designed for the um, one millimeter shafts for brushed motors and uh, you're supposed to bore out a hole here with a 1.4 millimeter um, drill bit however uh, I was not able to find one I went to the uh, craft store hardware store and 1.4 millimeters is apparently hard to find uh, Toma says that there's a place on Amazon that you can get it from I'll put a link to that in the description I'll have to order that uh, <laughs> that set as well for myself. Uh, I could only find 1.5 millimeter and 1.1 millimeter drill bits uh, in my area. So I'm going to see if this will work. Uh, these props are snug, but I'm not sure if they're going to fly off or not. So I'll just give it a little quick hover here and uh, see if uh, it'll work or not. But that's about it. We're all done. Uh, I already have uh, stuff flashed on here configured. Uh, did my uh, Beta flight and my uh, BL Hilly sweet configuration. Right now, I'm just running one shot, uh, 125. Um, these are BL Hilly SEC, so I could do multi multi shot, but not really sure if this is going to be much benefit for something this small. I may give it a try later on in the future. Anyway, I'm going to run a little bit of a hover for you guys here to see that it flies, and then uh, I'll have a, a separate uh, maiden flight video for you guys later. Anyway, so stay tuned for that. Let me know if you guys have any questions, and I'll talk to you guys later. I totally forgot to get a weight measurement here. Let me get that for you. And this is about the battery, and comes in at 55.6, about 55.6 grams.